first lesson is from the fourth chapter of Acts, verses 32 through 35, found in the Pew Bible, New Testament, page 106. While the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned or sold their possessions to help their fellow believers who were in need. Now begins the reading. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everywhere, everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought their proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Here ends the reading. The second lesson is from the first chapter to, through the second chapter, verse 2 of First John, found in the New Testament in the Pew Bible, page 211. The opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light, but our confessed reality has been sinned. God cleanses us from our sin, from our sinful reality, through Christ's death, so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. We declare to you what is from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message that we heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And it's not ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. Here ends the reading. Our gospel reading today will be taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. It can be found in your true Bible on the New Testament page 101. New Testament page 101. The story of Easter continues as the risen Lord appears to his disciples. 
His words of Thomas offer a blessing to all who entrust themselves in the faith of the risen Lord. The Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I so said I so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, was one of the twelve, was not with, with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. <coughs>
somebody asked for snow. Like I said at the beginning, that's our right though. Snow is white, right? And our Easter season is white. So it's okay to have a little bit of snow. We don't want to flip though, right? You know, we're playing a little bit if there's some snow out there when you leave. It may be a little bit, right? Well, good morning. And I'm glad that you guys weren't the ones that asked for the snow. I know some, uh, Wilbur in the first service said he asked for the snow. He admitted to it. He said, yeah, I did. I did. Isn't it amazing, though, sometimes how parents know when we've done something when we should have? Isn't that amazing? That's, a, that's never happened to you guys, right? Never? Really? That's never happened? Turn me down just a hair. You know? Turn me down just a hair. That's never happened that, that you did something and maybe mom and dad knew or and you said, oh, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. I know it's happened to me. I got caught. I tried, tried to say it wasn't me, but they knew. That's the same thing with, with God. God knows when we've done things wrong. Do you know that? He knows. We've done things wrong. He knows that. What? But Jesus is there for us. Jesus is the one that gets in front and says, you yeah, know, they're good people. They, they're trying hard. Even though they sin, they try hard. That's what, that's what Easter's about, is that, that death of Jesus for us when we sin. That's what it's about. And we should be happy. We should be smiling about that. There should be big smiles on our faces that Jesus went and died for us so that we can go to heaven. And that's what he was raised for us. So we can be seen with God in heaven. Isn't that, wouldn't that be cool? He'll be there and sinless, blameless, totally blameless because of Jesus. You should be excited about that. It's my okay. It is a good spot. Yeah, it's a good, it's good news. And we should be going out telling people about this. But did you hear the gospel today? After Jesus died and was resurrected, where were the disciples? They were hiding out behind a locked door. They were not spreading the good news, but they were hiding. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about going out and telling people about this great thing that we have in Jesus. All right? I'm going to talk more about that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the other reading, too, about, about not committing our sins and what that means and what that looks like. All right? You might actually learn something today. That's for the adults, too. If you want to pick up some tubes and animals, you're more welcome to go later. But if the kids want to, you'll have to give them up to the kids. So, do you hear that? The disciples are hiding out. You have a locked door. Jesus has risen, and they're hiding out. Remember last week's reading? Mary was told by the angel Jesus has risen. He has risen. And he is going ahead and meeting the disciples in Galilee. Go tell them this. Go tell them that Jesus said that he is going to meet them in Galilee. And what did she do? She kept quiet. This great news is she kept quiet. And now we have these disciples. 
hiding out in fear behind a locked door, not telling anybody about the good news. Except for one. He never gets a bad rap. You ever heard that thing called Doubting Thomas? Thomas gets his bad rap. He's doubting him. He's the one that's not hiding out, is he? The other, the other ones are there hiding out behind the locked door, and Thomas is not with them. So that means he's out and about someplace. How about fearless Thomas instead of doubting Thomas? We don't know what he was doing, but he at least was out of that house. He wasn't hiding out. He wasn't hiding. Maybe he was telling people about Jesus. Maybe he was just getting food. But either way, he was out, not hiding. The angel tells Mary to go tell people, go tell the disciples. Jesus wants us to go tell people. We get to be thankful. We should be smiling. Every one of us should be smiling because on Easter, our sins are forgiven. We see that in the death of Good Friday and the resurrection on Sunday. Remember, we're Easter people. This is the Easter season. You know, you get Pentecost on Sunday. The Sunday after Pentecost, the next Sunday after Pentecost. No, this is the Sunday, second Sunday of the Easter season. But we get to have Easter every Sunday, and that should be great news. We just want to go tell everybody. Right, Tyler? Everybody. You can smile too. Go get a smile. It does make people wonder what you're up to, though. You're smiling. See, now you're smiling. He likes that idea. Oh, it make people wonder. But it's okay to smile. It's good to smile. Because then, you know, people think, Lee, what's going on with you that you're smiling so much? He said, Well, let me, let me tell you about this guy, Jesus, and what he does for me, and what he does for you as well. Make people ask the question. Smile. Enjoy. Because we have that comfort. We know that Jesus protects us. What's the worst thing that can happen to us by anybody if we go out and talk about Jesus? What's the absolute worst thing that can happen to us? Maybe somebody will, maybe somebody will uh, do physical harm to us and might cause us death, right? The absolute worst thing that can absolutely happen. But wait a second. Death is not defeat. So that's really not all that bad. I mean, I'm not asking for us to go out and look for somebody that will do that harm on us. But the reality is, is what will people, might people do? <coughs> they might say, well, that kind of, kind of weird talk about Jesus. You, you might be some sort of Jesus freak. Remember that old ad, sticks and stones? They break my bones, but the words will never hurt me. So. So what? Go out and tell the words. Because Jesus gives us the words. He doesn't ask us to, to hide. He asks us to go out. So Thomas doubts, okay? They say that he doubts. Maybe he just wants to actually see Jesus. Just to be able to see him. The others got to see him. He got him to come back, right? He said, I'm back. Here you go. Check me out. He gets to see him. Then they start going out and telling people. But the reality also is there's another part of that story when we go out and tell people. We have to actually admit why Jesus died. Why did he die for us? Because we're sinners. I'm a sinner, just like every one of you. And I sin by the things I think. Things I don't think, the things I do, and the things I don't do. We are all sinners. And if we say that we are not, we heard it, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. And who is the truth but God? Now, have you ever heard those words before, other than in the Bible? Have you ever heard those words? Where have you heard those? gave you a hint earlier. Okay, open up those great books in front of you. Go to page 77. Yeah. I know we don't, in this service we don't use them that often, but we have used them. And if you'll take a look at page 77 after the second 
part 17, amen. What does it say by the key? Let's say it together. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God <laughs> is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now you know where they got that from. It's part of a confession. It's a confession that we use in the church. Confessing our sins so that we are free, free to go out and tell people. We don't have that burden of being terrible people and locked away and hiding. We are free because Jesus died for us. We are free from the sins that we have done, and we are free from the sins that we will do. And that should cause us to smile and make people go, what's going on over here? Right? What's going on over here? Tyler, what's going on? Why are you smiling? Why are you happy? That should make people ask, why? So that you can then say, well, let me tell you about this dude named Jesus. I can just see you doing that. Let me tell you about this dude named Jesus. Because he's got something to do too. And that should make us all smile. Instead of being locked away and not talking about who Jesus is. This is the perfect opportunity right now where you're sitting in the Easter season to talk about it. Because there's, there's people out there that don't know the good news, and there's also people that have heard well, some theology that isn't quite correct. You've heard the song here, and you probably remember it. Some of you old enough to remember it. But the song Spirit in the Sky. Remember that song? We sing that here. But... We make a modification to it, too. Now, this guy, Norman Greenbaum, here the last night, he was a Jewish guy. And he said, I can, I, can make, I can make a gospel song. So he threw this guy in the song. It's a good song. It's really good stuff. You know, going up to the Spirit of It's good stuff, except for one thing. It's got some theology that doesn't quite fit right. It's called decision theology, that you can make this happen. You can cause this. And that theology has been around and it still isn't around today in some denominations. So if you can make this happen, that means you can decide not to be sinless. And I can decide not to be sinless. Or to, to be sin, sin free. And you can decide to be sin free. And you can do it on your own too. How's that work for you and me? I don't know if it'll work for me so well. Because here's what it says in here. In this song, think about it. So we don't sing this here. Never been a sinner. I've never sinned. I'm not a friend of Jesus. The reality is this, the way that we sing it, is I am a sinner and I keep on sinning. I've got a friend of Jesus. And that's so free. It's not saying we're trying to go out sinning, but the reality is we are sinners. The reality is we're going to keep going on sinning. But the reality is we have a friend in Jesus. And that should cause us to smile. And that should cause us to go out and tell people about this good news. This dude named Jesus who put himself upon a tree. Allowed it to happen. To die for us. And then God said, I'm going to raise him. And you guys are baptized into the brothers and sisters of his. And you all get to partake in eternal life because of that. That, that is the good news. That is the gospel that we go out and tell people. The gospel is that we are sinners. We keep sinning, but we have a friend in Jesus. And we are not staying behind my doors. We are going out and telling people that. Go out today and tell people that. Go out today and say, yeah, I am a sinner. Yes, I keep sinning. But that's what Jesus died for. And I keep hoping to do it a little bit better. And I get a little bit better at each day. 